My favorite part of the once packed Democratic clown car, finally making enough stops to be more of a clown scooter with a sidecar now, is watching the irony of the self-celebrated most diverse field ever to run become the most diverse field ever to lose. The party of youth and the party of color is now the party of the oldest, whitest guys fighting over the scraps of the Rainbow Coalition's carcass. Bernie, you got beaten by overwhelming support I have from the African-American community, Bernie. You got beaten because of suburban women, Bernie. And consequently, there is hilarious mental anguish from Democrats and media struggling to accept one of two totally unacceptable explanations. Either the best candidates are winning, in which case they have to say that outcome doesn't matter as long as the process is fair, but that's a sweeping admission they can't accept because it would undermine their claims of discrimination in every other context, or they have to continue claiming that unequal outcome does automatically mean discrimination, in which case they have to implicate themselves as bigots. You can see this mental struggle play out in real time as Rachel Maddow interviewed the last of the Mohicans this week. You can't get the nomination, and neither can Kamala Harris, and neither can Amy Klobuchar, and neither can Kirsten Gillibrand. Your campaign ending is, is, is very specific to you, and it also feels a little bit like a death knell in terms of the prospects of having a woman for president in our lifetimes. Oh, God, please no. That can't be right. This cannot be the right answer. Notice how Tulsi is just excluded. Shut up, Tulsi. You don't count. Hillary says you're not in the club. But that can't be right. Oh, no, that can't be right. It can't be that... Democratic voters are sexist and make it impossible for a Democratic woman to be president, but if they're not sexist, then I have to take personal responsibility for my own hilariously dishonest campaign. Tough call. Unstoppable force meets immovable object, but if one of these has to win out, you can bet it won't be Democrats and media taking personal responsibility. They will throw their own right under that clown scooter way before they'll ever so much as consider their own faults or missteps. We all remember one of the key moments in Hillary's 2016 downfall, maligning half of Trump supporters as the so-called basket of deplorables, accusing people who disagree with her politically of having serious character flaws. You could put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. The racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic, you name it. And that wasn't received well with anybody. Polling about the comments found 65% of respondents said it's unfair to describe a large portion of Trump supporters as prejudiced against women and minorities. Even half of Democrats said the commentary was out of line. Hillary then walked it back and her campaign manager acknowledged it alienated voters. It wasn't the only reason Hillary lost, but it certainly wasn't a help. And yet Democrats either lack the political savvy to learn from that mistake, or they're so foolish as to think the problem was Hillary didn't malign people enough, better try it more next time, or maybe it's just the easiest available thing to blame, short of actually being introspective about their own shortcomings. But for whatever reason, with every stripe this rainbow campaign sheds, Democrats go for another scoop from the deplorable well. First, it was Kamala Harris, who was somehow a victim of racism and sexism. The way that the media treated Senator Harris in this campaign has been something else. And I think held her to a different standard, a double standard. You know, I do remember a double standard with Kamala. You're right. A double standard in her favor. The entire reason her campaign ascended is because she was given unlimited debate time to leverage her Indian and Jamaican parents into some sort of unique qualification to grandstand about American slavery reparations. Oh, we're going to get to you. Hang on. We're going to get to you. stage, I would well, like to speak I, I, on the issue of race. <laughs> And then she had her nice little rise until she got wrecked by the other woman of color who doesn't count for some reason. And then she fell off in the polls because she never put together a good defense for her own prosecutorial record. Not because the people supporting her suddenly became racist and sexist. Although if anyone was actually bad enough to suddenly make people racist and sexist, Kamala's close, but... That's not what happened. Cory Booker stuck it out longer, despite never having the surge that Kamala did, but he probably stuck it out too long. He was sadly reduced to racial panhandling by email. Hey guys, it's black man Cory Booker here. Please cut me a check on account of me being the only black guy still around. I can't believe that wasn't a compelling pitch, but we all know why. Because Democratic voters are far too racist 
to see its appeal. Lately, we're hearing of Democratic voters' ingrained homophobia, too. Mayor Pete couldn't carry his Iowa momentum, and homophobia helps explain why. The data say there's a big disparity between statements of support for a gay candidate and actually voting for one. I can't believe it. People virtue signal publicly and then don't actually do anything about it? Yeah, congratulations on catching on. We've all been watching you do this for years now. The racists, the sexists, the homophobes. Democrats and media are perfectly content to malign their own to explain why every last diversity box remains unchecked now that Elizabeth Warren has lost her war with the pale faces. Gender in this race, you know. That is the trap question for every woman. If you say, yeah, there was sexism in this race, everyone says, whiner. And if you say, no, there was no sexism, about a bazillion women think, what planet do you live on? Are these the same bazillion women who didn't vote for you and voted for men instead? Are these bazillion women who see the obvious sexism Upholding the sexism by voting for men? How about the bazillion Democratic women in your own home state who still said no thank you, Elizabeth? Are they sexist? If they aren't, the only other explanation for their behavior is you didn't give them a compelling reason to vote for you. And voting solely based on gender is, ironically, pretty sexist. Kamala Harris emerged from the coffin we thought Tulsi buried six feet under to say much the same. We all know, and this election cycle in particular, has also presented very legitimate questions about the challenges of women running for president of the United States. Why do you say that? Well, it's obvious. Just look at what's happened. The reality is that there's still a lot of work to be done to make it very clear that women are exceptionally qualified and capable of being the commander-in-chief of the United States of America. Oh, now it's exceptionally qualified, is it? Now it's not that women are equally qualified to hold office and therefore gender should be no consideration. Now it's that women are actually more qualified. So shame on you for not voting Kamala Kuchi. If this country generally, and even Democrats specifically, are resistant to putting women in positions of power, then how did these women gain their positions of power in the first place? Nancy Pelosi juggles this question with the added difficulty of keeping her teeth in place. What does Elizabeth Warren's withdrawal from this race say about the willingness of Americans and the Democratic Party to put a woman at the top of the ticket? Well, it's a whole other subject for another day, but you and I do not have time for it right now because I have to go to Georgetown and talk about women in power and, uh, <laughs> and how important that is. But I do think there's a certain... Uh, element of misogyny that is that is there. It's misogyny that keeps women out of the White House, says the woman who's currently third in line for the White House on her way to a women's empowerment conference. This is a very oddly and contradictorily, if that's even a word, oddly and contradictorily specific form of misogyny. If we elect women to the House and the Senate and the highest legislative leadership offices within, how is it that we hate women? We apparently hate women only in this one specific way that we won't vote for one for president. And when I say we, I of course mean you, the people who say we have to vote for women, but then don't actually vote for women. And why? For no other reason than the women your party ran have massive flaws as candidates. Elizabeth Warren has never refused an opportunity to lie herself into advancement, no matter how absurd. Kamala Harris laughs about her own blazing and listening to Tupac, which never even happened, but she did lock people in prison for blazing and listening to Tupac. And Amy Klobuchar thinks this is a good selling point. The biggest misconception is that I'm boring, because I'm not. <laughs> um, I'm not boring. I once ate a salad with a comb. You know what? Go back to vote for me because vagina. That's actually a more compelling case. At this point, this is a party in serious need of either ideological reconciliation or a total split. They have to decide what matters more, the philosophy that the party supposedly stands for, or the identity of the last person standing. And if it is identity, just go with that. 
Don't try to juggle both pins. Don't try to humor us by pretending to care about the integrity of the process. Don't even hold a primary at all. If you're just going to second guess voters' decisions and accuse them of prejudice if their choices don't align with yours, just save us all the time and roll out your trans, disabled, lesbian, Muslim, midget, elephantitis suffering nominee of color and demand we all bow before our queen or be labeled a bigot. At least that way you're being honest. Just don't be surprised when, just like last time, we all consider our options and decide, you know what, I guess I'll take being called a bigot. Turns out, it's not that bad after all. Thanks, as always, for listening and for supporting this channel. Always appreciate that thoughtful discussion down below and especially over on Twitter. That is at ML Christensen. You're always welcome to coming out and chat in my live streams. Those are linked down in the description. Looking forward to it. Goodbye.